In this tutorial, we'll explore how to create a Bauhaus poster in Adobe InDesign, paying tribute to the Bauhaus, a German art school that was very influential in design history. But before we get started, if you're looking for professional assets like fonts, stock photos, and design templates, remember to check out Envato Elements. One low fee gets you access to a library of content. Check out the link in the description for more info. Now let's jump into Adobe InDesign. Let's start with a new document at A3 size, like this one. Before we start designing, let's create some layers. Open up your Layers panel by going to Window and then Layers. Let's rename our default layer here by double-clicking on it and naming it Background. Then let's add some other layers here too. Just click on the plus sign here at the bottom of the Layers panel and rename them. Here's what we're looking for. Type, Shapes, Guides, Texture, and background. This is how we'll organize our layout. Now let's lock all of our layers except for the guides layer. Pull from our rulers and create both a vertical and horizontal guide that align to the middle of our page. Next, let's use the line tool. We'll create a line along each of these guides, a vertical one and a horizontal one. Once we have those drawn, let's select them both. Then right-click on PC or Control-click on Mac, and from the resulting menu, let's go to Transform and then Rotate. We want an angle of 45 degrees. Then click OK. We're going to use these lines as the basis for our poster, so let's jump right in. Let's unlock our type layer and then lock the others. Use the Type tool to create some type. We'll make our type read Bauhaus. Next, let's turn to the Character panel. We can find it under Window, Type and Tables, Character. Let's use the font Bergen Sans Bold, with a font size of 200 points. Now we'll rotate the type, using our guides here as inspiration. Select the type, then right-click on PC or Control-click on Mac, select Transform, and then Rotate. We want 45 degrees here. Then with our selection tool, we can position this type along our guide. Let's repeat this process with more type. Create a text box with some text. Then rotate it. Let's do this one at a 45 degree angle. And let's add another one using a different font called Regime. We can rotate and place our type here using these guides to follow the aesthetic. Here's a look at some sample text all following this process. Now that we've laid out some text, let's take a look at adding color to our design. Open up your swatches by going to Window, Color, Swatches. Let's make some new swatches to use in our design. Here's a look at the colors we'll use. Color 1 has these values, C5, M11, Y93, K0. Color 2 has these values, C92, M61, Y1, K0. Color 3 has these values. C0, M50, Y91, K0. Color 4 has these values. C8, M94, Y98, K1. Color 5 has these values. C36, M31, Y33, K10. And color 6 has these values, C9, M10, Y22, K0. Now let's unlock our background layer. Use the Rectangle Frame tool to draw a large rectangle that occupies the entire canvas out past the bleed. Next, we'll place a textured image from Envato Elements. Check out the description below for links to download it. All we need to do is go to File, Place. Select the image from your computer and InDesign places it here for us. Let's draw another large rectangular shape, this time with the rectangle tool. We'll use one of our swatches here, the light vanilla color. With the shape selected, go to Object, Effects, Transparency. We want to set the blending mode to multiply, then click OK. Let's lock up our background layer and work on our shapes. We'll start with an ellipse using the Ellipse tool. Draw a circular shape like this, 
behind the B in Bauhaus. Let's use the yellow color in our swatches that we defined earlier. Then we can go back to Object, Effects, Transparency again and set that blending mode to Multiply. Repeat this process with a number of different shapes, all taking the angles we've established here as inspiration. For example, let's try this out with a rectangular shape. We can draw our rectangle with the Rectangle tool in that same yellow. Go back to Object, Effects, Transparency, and set the blending mode to Multiply. Let's rotate it like we did with the other parts of our composition. 45 degrees is a great choice. Let's try this out with different swatches, like this example. To wrap up our poster, let's add a vintage texture to the whole thing. Lock up your layers and let's turn to the texture layer. That's the one we'll work on. Create a large rectangular frame and let's place an image again. That's File, Place, and navigate to the file on your computer. I'll be using a texture from Envato Elements, so remember to check the description to download it. Let's go to Object, Effects, Transparency, and change the blending mode to Multiply. We can also lower the opacity to 60%, so it's a little less intense. Let's do one more effect. Create another full-size rectangular shape, this time in a gray swatch that we've already defined. We're going back to Object, Effects, Transparency, but we're going to do something a little different this time. Turn down the opacity to 35%. Then, click on Gradient Feather here in our Effects panel. Set the type to Radial and adjust the gradient stops so it's darker towards the outer parts of the page. Remember to toggle Preview on if you want to check out these values before you commit to them. And there you have it. You've created a Bauhaus-inspired poster design. You can export your work by going to File, Export, and you can choose from a variety of file types such as PNG, JPG, and more. And remember, all of the fonts and textures used in this design are available for download right now on Envato Elements. Check out the description to download now. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to our channel. You can click on the notification bell too, so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching.